suppose we'll do some demo on natural edge uh, end grain. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. So I thought I'd start with the finished object so you can see what I'm aiming at. Um, these are two that I just turned this morning. Uh, that's, so the story behind this was my sister-in-law sent me a photo uh, or a link to a website selling this kind of bowl. So it's a natural chunk of, of tree and then they basically hollowed out the centre and pretty much the profile as far as I could see from the website was pretty much a hemisphere. Um, fairly you know, even sort of surface, not particularly dished or too deep. The, di the main difference was they had basically painted this whole upper rim with a, a hard um, gloss paint and I think what they were aiming for was something that you could actually eat out of, you know, use as a soup bowl. Um, Don and I were talking about this, I think, a bit, and talking and saying, you know, <clears throat> you can do a lot with some of the, the UV polishes, um, some of them are food safe, but with, when it comes to things like soups and stews, I'd really be um, going for something that's got a, a, a lasting, hard finish on it. Um, and they look quite attractive, you know, painted nice, sort of pure, simple colour. Um, <clears throat> obviously, if you can find one without a lot of chips off the side, um, I have a piece which I'm going to uh, talk about there, Glyditsia uh, honey locust that I got a long while back, and there are some parts of that um, <clears throat> where they'd cl been climbing up the branch uh, climbing up the, the trunk and you can see the um, the timber um, the timber workers uh, spikes into the, the bark so you know keep an eye out for th things like that um, but on the other hand what what we're fundamentally aiming for with this is something that gives you that sense that it's you know there's your net that there's your original bit of a tree so that's <clears throat> that's the foot that I'm going to be turning on it, so it's just a very simple inset foot. Um, that this is the other attempt that I had, um, which is which I was going to try and a um, out outer foot clamped in. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, because of my fantastic measuring system, that is about two millimeters smaller than the smallest diameter of the chuck that I was going to use. So. Rather than go down a whole other size, I just read read that as an outside. Um, do you um, do you use green wood for this? Um, you could. There's no reason why not. Because um, it's just in you. If you if you wait till it's dry, it's sort of going to crack and all that. Yeah. What I what I do um, with the the logs that I work with is. Um, like, I should say as well, as a preface to all this, um, I don't, I'm not an expert. Um, I happened to pick this particular design up and I liked it and I practiced it a bit and then sat down and asked me to do a talk and I thought I could do that. Um, so there may be other better ways of doing some of this. Um, I don't want to sound like a you know, professional by any stretch, but what, I've, what I usually do when I get a, a piece of wood is put a hard, um, dip it in wax basically and put a hard you know, sort of surface on that and that has, that stopped most of the splitting, you can still see with that there's, there's still a couple of splits, smaller splits right in the, uh, in the sort of end of it, but that, they're probably not going to go more than an inch or two. This is uh, Glyditsia the species, uh, also known as honey locust. Um, it's, uh, it's a nice timber to wood work, it's very uh, even, and you can see that that bit there is a, a sort of ready, slightly green, or sort of ready brown colour, and the outside uh, is more of a white, even sort of a bit of bit green, 
Um, so it has a lot of contrast in it. It's quite nice for, um, especially for this kind of thing, a natural edge bowl there where you've got that middle section showing up in a different colour would look good. Um, <coughs> so so how long since this was felled? Uh, about I picked up in 2007. Oh, okay. Um, and that's just been sitting in my wood pile ever this since. One? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's actually that's there's the one that I should have handed around. That's the the wax finish on the bottom of it. It's basically a, a combination of beeswax and um, paraffin wax, which is basically whatever I could scrape together from you know, old candles and things like that. Um, so just I thought I'd just quickly talk about the the cutting process um, with. With this, obviously, when you want, want to work, uh, cut something like this, you're going to need a, a jig um, to, to cut so that it doesn't try to roll the, the log over onto your fingers or bind the um, uh, bind the, band, the blade. Um, you're, because we're aiming for a hemispheric cut, um, the length you want is, is about the radius, the, the smallest radius of the log plus a centimetre or two um, proportionately. Um, I like these because often, uh, especially with the, the ones that I've finished, um, I think they're good if they have a bit of weight in the bottom so that you don't feel like you're either just going to pump straight through it or they're, they're going to, um, if you have a, a foot that's gripped from the outside, that it's going to then tip over or something like that. Um, so, with this, uh, I had another plan for this. One variation you can do with this, uh, if I can grab one of those back, uh, is, um, as, so starting from that profile, so we've got the, the inside, but instead of this straight outside, we've left a, a, a band there and then come in and finish the bowl off. So it's got a natural rim sticking out, but otherwise it's a regular sort of end grain bowl. So let's maybe leave that till later. To start with the, this process. Uh, so I've drilled um, a hole pretty much as, you know, I'm just judging it by eye, but in the centre, um, just use the drill press there, um, and I'm using this. This one's um, a bit thinner, but it's it's still uh, for this kind of job, it's you know, perfectly good grip. Um, so. <coughs> The way to approach it is to say you want this, the top face, this is going to be the top face with the screw chucking, that you want to be as 90 degree to the centre of the, the, the line of the wood as you possibly can because the bottom you can finish off any old how. The top, and that, the bottom you, know, you could start with the cracks there and then turn them off. Um, so I'm still going, still summoning up the courage to do what Richard Raffin does: start the lathe and then screw it on and go like that as soon as it grips. But not just yet. It would. Yeah, I can't. It, I, I've, I've done it, but you know. Yeah. Down, as low as he could get it, it was still going, and he did it that way. Yeah, I tried, it yeah. and I couldn't get it off because it could be too tight. <laughs> I want to do that again. Um, now, in grain, you can probably see a few little bits on the bottom of those um, where there's just little pockets in the wood and it's chipped out a little bit. Um, this is where I'm going to have to defer to the, the masters on this process. Um, so there's, there's, two, there's two ways to um, hollow it out. The, the traditional way for uh, the, I'm used to uh, is the same, exactly the same way that you'd hollow a normal side grain bowl. 
Um, so using the bowl gouge, coming in like that, um, and then scooping in like that. The other way is with the spindle gouge. Sorry, the, um, yeah, spindle gouge. And starting from there, yeah, you need that right at the, the pivot point, right at, right at the centre of the wood. Then once you've started the cut, roll it slightly towards you so that, that surface there is basically sheer scraping on the inside. So I'm going to start just by finishing off the bottom, making sure that's nice and flat. I'm going to use the, the bowl gouge because that's what I'm used to. <laughs> because I've cut on cut these on that uh, jig, they're already pretty much 90 degrees. So you can see for the, the people on the line there, you can see there's really not much I have to do um, to finish that off. I'm aiming just for a slightly concave. a foot that's going to sit on that. Um, the way I've come up to with making sure I can do that nice and easily is I've got pencil marks on the side of, of my um, skew chisel that I can then measure out. That one, the middle, the, the smallest one there is the absolute minimum diameter of these jaws. So I know I can judge that up by eye so, okay, about the mark, mark the centre, and then come up with a, a the point at which I'm going to cut the inset for that mm. chuck. So I, I would start this just by starting. Going pretty much parallel to the, um, the grain, parallel to the, the direction of the um, blade the axis. Don't want to take a lot off there. That's um, a skew chisel, is it? Yeah, that's a standard skew chisel. Um, and I, I use this to cut the bulk out of there because it gives a, a nicer cut. Goes, goes a bit quicker than trying to scrape the whole thing out. Um, but then I'll finish that off with the, the skew chisel. Just bring it gradually along, pretty much horizontal, and just try to press down evenly on the fibers. <coughs> In grain cutting, the, because the, the direction of the fibers are like that, and if you're going to push them in, that's good. You don't want to try and pull them out like that. So pressing down is a good way to cut them. Pressing along is also good, but that tends to push them out. Pressing down into it is a gives you a pretty good finish. It just seems to be pretty good. Use that to check how the that. Um, surface. I want that to be slightly convex so it rests on the outside. Um, not too much otherwise it tries to rest on an uneven rim and that doesn't sit well. to note here um, those those ones I used a larger chuck because I'm on a larger lathe and it's probably actually better to have that inset 
there wider so you really only need about a centimetre of continuous edge there um, but let's see how this goes so that's the the foot done. I'm not going to sand it first. Um, no, this is just a demo. You're not going to check it? <laughs> <laughs> he said that's what, that's what I'd be doing. <laughs> yeah. uh, sure, it'll be fine. Mm. Oh, see? He was right. <laughs> <laughs> Been there and done that before. No, it's usually paid from other two pair guy. Too small. Too small. Yep. So well, this is usually make a little gauge. I think on my two inch jaws it's fifty seven yeah. millimeters. Okay. That's what I'm hoping for with these marks. I don't think don't know whether that's worked well or not. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's a quarter inch of it. This is probably a, as much a personal preference as anything, but I always like um, feet that you, where you're gripping from the inside. Um, the reason for that is that gripping from the outside, you have to get it pretty much exact. If it's exactly the circumference of the, the, the jaw mm -hmm. when it sits in there, um, then you get no marking. Otherwise, if it's you know even four mil off, then you get noticeable sort of four point marks where the, the jaws have closed in sideways on it. Eight, eight marks, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Four sets of marks. <laughs> but, on the other hand, if you go from the inside out, it doesn't then so much. It, you're, you're the, the middle of the circle is meeting, and it's much less noticeable. And you've also yeah. got to basically look That's inside right. like that yeah. to see it. So, it works brilliantly as a set of disguise. <laughs> which, yeah, yeah. Yeah. which which is probably why you need a a, um, you know, a centimeter or so, uh, especially in grain. There, I'd be very very careful about going too close to the edge. There. It's, it's not a strong hold, though, is it? That, that um, yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, yeah. But crushing it's caught, caught, caught into the the notes in the uh, nova. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's, book it says that. It, says that. It, mm -hmm. it is, you know, it is going to try to push the fibres apart. And if you're talking about something that's already starting to split or fairly fragile, then yeah, it's it, it's quite easy to push out. But a, apart from that, I've had exactly the same number of um, times that it's popped out or you know, pushed out with that kind of. Um, setup versus a, a clamped in setup. You're still, you've still got the problem of if you push too hard down there or you're pushing that way, you can leave the, the um, wood out of the chuck. Yeah. The difference I think is that the, with an outside grip, you're, you're then going to tear off that bit of outside mm -hmm. and that makes it harder to chuck. This, time, this, this way you often end up with something that's still quite grippable. So anyway, it's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen to me on Thursday, and uh, you might think I was being a bit too brutal. Had a couple of times. Uh, so, the first method I thought I'd demonstrate is the uh, hollowing with the fingernail gouge. You want that to be um, that the tool rest to be at the height such that the point of the tool is right on the centre, the axis of the, the, um, the work. Otherwise, it's difficult to mm. get that little middle bit, especially if you're too low, 
it'll be difficult to get that out. Um, too high, you can probably come down into it okay. And I know you want to make sure that the rest isn't too close, otherwise it'll be resting on the bevel and as you move forward, it, yeah. the tool moves upwards. Yep, yep, that's a good point. And that's probably a little too close for me there. So, come out like that. And the cut we're going to do is basically, as I was saying before, um, come in, go in, then turn it towards me and then and follow it out. And we're cutting on that forward side that using more or less a scraping how cut. How are you resting the bed then? How, can, how could it possibly be resting? So it's actually, this is, this is not resting on the bevel, it's acting as a scraper. Oh. So, coming like that, wide it out. fibers are going that way and I'm cutting down so that they're pushing together. So as I come out, the work the fibers are supporting themselves and it gets a better cut. It's tempting at this point to try and go back along that curve but that will pull the fibers out of the wood and leave with a rough, rough surface. Another way, to, to, another way to do this is with the standard bowl gouge. So you start at the end, turn it around, and then this is where we're using the, that bevel of the tool to follow that curve in. But because we're cutting the end grain here, this is a, a scraping cut rather than a parting cut. So it actually takes a lot longer and causes more friction. So that's your, your essential bowl, bowl gouge cut. If I hear it vibrating like that, I turn, turn the tool towards me again so that the I just try cutting less wood. Using that as this as well, you can start from that center, and if you want to come around here, you can probably see it better, but you start from that center, push the tool forward into the wood and then you're cutting with the top edge of the bed, the um, blade as I come up and over. Yeah. Yeah. So cutting in, push forward. So the cutting edge is actually forward of that vertical line. And that means that if the tool catches, it will push back into the bevel and stop cutting. So it's quite a, quite a safe cut in that regard. And you can see I get a pretty good shading out of it as well. You can pretty much go right up to the top there. It's risky to try and do that whole that top bit because then you won't be supported by the bevel and it'll come out. But you can also use this the same way. You've got the bevel rubbing there, take it back 
so the bevel will slide in. And down, so we're using the pot, the, the away part of the, the um, chisel to do the cutting on that downward. So up and over, and then back. Is a really good way of hollowing out a lot of. Can you do that on end grain? You can do that on both. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's similar to back hollowing. That's, that's, back, hollowing. Yes. that's back hollowing. With back hollowing, you keep the, your entrance small, you don't make it large. So you're yeah. actually using, using the entrance yeah. as the a support for your tool. Yeah, yeah. With, with back hollowing, you're resting at part of the fulcrum of yeah. the. the um, Tool is actually that inside the edge right, yeah. of the work there, which which means which what, once that gets too large, it doesn't support it properly. Yeah, it and it also it means you've got a heck of a lot of, especially in some cuts, you've got a heck of a lot of leverage there. Yeah. You're pulling directly sideways yeah, yeah, as yeah, possible to pull the whole work out. Of the, it takes yeah. a lot of practice. To do yeah, yeah. but that's getting a pretty long is under the spindle gun. Yeah, yeah, it's getting pretty close. Yeah. It's similar in a way. It's usually done with it. Yes, I want to try and get this is now fairly deep, and I want to get it widened out a bit. This is a slight change in the tone as I come off the, the side of there and start actually resting the bevel on the edge there. Quite a bit of there. That's where it changes to actually cutting the outside of the wood. Are you using it as a scraper again? Essentially, yeah. So it's scraping the actual cutting edge at 90 degrees to the direction the wood is entering. is you want to try to keep, you still want to actually be cutting wood there. The moment you start to go into bark um, and then lose wood altogether, then it starts getting holes in it. There's, there's probably a, an aesthetic form there as well. But he's you, you saw an opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> Stick it back with a bit of Yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jim, I do it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to tell people that. <laughs> really like about this cut as well is it clears the shavings out as you use it. Mm. I'm going to finish this, this up with the, my um, bowl scraper. Um, this is Huge. fairly close to the actual profile of the bowl so I really need to be a bit careful with this. This is a good way of just evening up those little bumps and, and lumps left by the um, fingernail guard.
top face. And then basically you sand it and finish it from there. So that's the end result. Okay. And it's a yeah. There's a lot. I think there's a lot of opportunities for different um, shapes there, and that's obviously something where I'm trying to follow that original design of a mm. fairly hemispheric profile. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot to be said for you know, deeper bowls. Um, the other idea for small, you know, a piece of timber a bit like this, which is sort of only you know, two inches, maybe three thick, um, would be a, a form of natural edged egg, egg cups. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just a, you know, a deep hole, hollow. And actually I saw uh, one of the, the um, bays there um, someone had made a pencil box out of exactly the same kind of thing. Natural edge, simple foot, deep hollow, um, and there, I think that one actually has the evidence of a force and a bit used in it. Mm -hmm. um, but, I think it's working out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I find for that kind of deep hollowing, um, for, you know, for pencil box and things like that, having sloped sides, uh, which you'd normally end up with it if you're trying to hollow, um, works out just fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's the pens together. So. I noticed you were, the bottom's fairly deep. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, I would have gone for probably somewhat shallower. Yep. Depth. That's just me being a bit inaccurate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, yeah. This, yeah. This sort of. You could have that. Oh, yeah. yeah. You could have it a lot, a lot flatter. Mm -hmm. Um, could have got linisher, could you just back it off a bit? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Can. The, the only danger with the linisher is it's really easy. Um, in some timbers, it's going to be easy to get actually get tear out on the edge, um, but also it's easy to end up with a, a foot that is slightly oh, yeah. convex yeah. in one direction, Absolutely. so tipping over. Um, so I'm, I'm amazed that bark didn't start flying. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, that's, that's not that close. That's not that close. That when, when, yeah. you, when, when you cut it, when you cut yeah. the bands, yeah. or, oh, yeah. well, some, so it must be the type of timber. Yeah, that's that's pin oak, um, which I got a couple of years ago from um, when I was working at ANU. You now I cut came a branch off one of the trees nearby. Um, I've had that since about 2007. So that's actually done very well. And, Held, held the bark on nicely. Mm -hmm. Other things that are going to have the bark peel off quite quickly. Quite quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still think there's an interest. You know, there's interest there. Um, you know, like a piece of wattle where the bark comes off off in big right. sheets. And yeah. but underneath is quite an interesting timber in its own right. Mm -hmm. That would still be interesting. So, do you want me to? Cut off a, a thing and see if I can make a bowl with a natural room. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's do that. I mean, you could even do that with a, a square piece of tin. Yeah, you do. A square yeah. piece of. Yeah. They do say that, that to control end grain, you need a hook tool, and that's because you are able to come to the fibers from the side natural room. Hmm. And this is why most of the hollowers are. Work in particular the deep hollow, you need to actually have that. Yeah. You can actually see that we have got limited <laughs> in the actual cutting <laughs> yeah, in the yeah, radius. Yeah. And, and, uh, and so it is very interesting to actually look at the various techniques that's used for end grain to cross grain. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the, the advantage with a hook tool, for those that haven't seen one, a hook tool um, basically has an end like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, are very similar to that in profile. So, as it, uh, if that's the, the profile of the tool, the fibers are coming down like that, and it's actually cleanly slicing them off rather than using a scraping cut yeah. like that, which will cause more tear out. Okay. I haven't, 
I've used a ring tool once. Um, a ring tool is a variation of a hook tool. But yeah. yeah. And hook tools, you know, there's various ones, you know. Martel, of course, the Canadian dance to do it, and of course they tend to advertise as such. Yeah. Richard has shown in touch. Uh, the various hollow tools, like the, the wood, uh, wood fast, not, not wood fast, uh, wood, wood cut, wood, 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 wood cut, wood cut, wood cut yeah. one yeah. is actually yeah. a wood tool. Hmm. It's just that they are shielded wood tool, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I've used it recently just for hollowing, you know, so of course they, they hollow it at an enormous rate. What, mm. did, what did you think? I think they're fantastic. Is that the one we'll with the short. little disc? Yeah. Little disc on the end. Little well, but no, they've got a limiter. You know, you've got a brass uh, cut uh, shield on top that mm. can adjust the cut. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, yeah. you've got some of the hooks, the metal. You know, of course, the the other New Zealand brand, which is the Munro tool, is as another version of it. Mm -hmm. So there are all various uh, variations of mm. the hook tool. That and they cut it an enormous rate. You know, mm. it's, it's amazing. You know, you're hollowing. I hold on a fairly large thing in all no time. Yeah, yeah. it's and quite I'm, amazing. Yeah. I'm interested in those kind of tools because it, because the real advantage there is you're getting a very clean cut. Yeah. You don't have to do a lot of sanding, and you don't get a lot of, especially on um, side grain bowls. Mm -hmm. um, trying to limit the places that you get tear out, um, it's really, really hard going, sanding out that last little bit of tear out when everything else is solid wood around it. Oh, but you yeah. just did that one all right? That, that didn't have any tear out? No, that's, With that's that okay. With that fingernail gouge you used? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um, well, I was going faster and harder than I thought. It's the hooks a limit of the tool and ring tool you can. Yeah, uh, and I think that one you're talking about, I think it's the, the wood, wood, yeah, the wood mm. That that is a sort of like a, a depth gauge or limit. Yeah, a limit. It stops yeah. you trying to take too big a bite at a time. Mm. Yeah, which there's, means you know because you can get into a stage where you take too big a bite and the whole. Yeah. Well, there's, there's another, yeah, there's most there's of them, unless you're, you're trailing, then you're not. You know, you're preventing it by by actually. Because what happens is that when you're going very deep, you have to cut at at at, at a center cut. Mm. You cannot <laughs> mm. dip too low. Yeah, and that's yeah. where yeah. Uh, some of the, those bowl saver devices yeah. will yeah. lock the tool with exactly. the horizontal plane. Exactly. Yeah. The other variation of those I saw was a, essentially a, a scraper bit, but um, with a um, so the the tool has the the, the bit. And then a, a straight piece, and then another bar that comes out like that, yeah. with a spring that you can wind through a, a hole. The spring sets the distance between the cutting edge, uh, a cutting point, and the outside of the bowl. Mm -hmm. It's used for going inside like that. Oh, yeah. But also this point here sits on the rest and yeah. stops it from and tipping it over. Yeah. So you don't have to apply the same kind of lateral force to keep it upright um, and the the amusing thing was tr watching this guy which is a video on YouTube um, hollowing out a almost sort of spherical kind of bowl um, and the spring will either f sort of flick down and rest on it or if it if it's not touching it'll sit, sit straight but if it's nearly there it'll wobble around like anything yeah. That's where that, that's the sign. So it's almost got three modes. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I'll go through this one. Um, I'll start with let's start with that side, I think, because that's nice. Looks pretty good. Nice, sort of clean, um, clean bark. Not a lot of um, projections or anything like that. First, make sure my cooking is on. For this, ideally, if you, can, if you can find that point when using this tube. Find that point where the log rests naturally and doesn't want to turn over. That's a good thing. 
um, but also you're aiming, you really want one of these two sides to be as nice as at a near perfect right angle to the grain of the wood. Because that's the one that you then want to use as the foot that you're going to base it on. So that, that, the 90 degree angle, the way I've cut it there, is the top. That's the bit you're going to put the screw chuck into, and that's where you then get to level off the other, foot. The other side can be as uh, up and down as you want. Well. slightly skew. Um, I'm going to have to lift it up slightly so that this the, the screw hole is at 90 degrees. for 
the scraping cup for the uh, scooters or
got that nice continuation on from spring there right out to, to almost touching back there again, which I kind of like.
to get it right first time. <laughs> The centre has been pretty, pretty much um, the dead on. Mm -hmm. the, the centre of the wood has been in the centre of the, the piece mm -hmm. because the branch has grown fairly evenly. This branch, branches usually grow so that the, um, the that's the way that that would mm. probably hang. Yep. So that the mm. it's the growth happens underneath. Which, which is both where gravity pulls it, and which then buttresses that oh, gives it more strength. Right. So that that will, on the other hand, that side, you see, this is probably closer to the centre of the, the yep. tree. Uh, but I'm no expert. I'm probably completely wrong. No, that's good no, I'm just wondering um, how difficult that's going to be. Plausible. Well, you can see, and that that's this is a a branch that came off a Mexican cypress tree of ours and that was hanging that way and that's where the centre of um, where is it there actually sorry no, I can't remember of course cypress hanging down though are they stupid yeah there's the centre of the wood yeah. that's right. that's the right. underhand that's the bit that hangs there. Um, no it must have been that's right it must have been like that yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. Anyway. Okay, so. Sorry. Yeah. Those. Oh, yeah. Oh, here's the thing and I'll gouge again. Yep. Is that a spindle gouge? Mm -hmm. Is that the same as a spindle gouge? Yeah, it's a type of spindle gouge. Just the way the. No. Just the way I'm going to start, as I should actually always do, by finishing off the, the top ends, making sure that's straight. Start from the centre.
Um, I honestly have not yet tried this for side grain okay. buying. I think the real problem that you'd have with it is that you'd probably get a lot of tear out yeah, on the, the uphill side, so to speak. Um, less of a problem with this. <laughs> The only thing that I don't like about this is that I'm, I don't, you know, it's easy with, with this, this lathe, I can step around it like this and hold it close to my, yeah. close to my body. Here I'm having to wave it around out of the room. All that really means is you just take a small oh. one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise it was working. <laughs> And that's that's basically when I start cutting Past into the there, okay. where the, the edge is actually yeah. that's off the edge of the bowl. And that's pointy there. Too. And it yeah. up, so. it up Sorry. It kicks up at the back. Yeah. If it does, if you're finding it biting too much, roll it over. The more you roll it over, the less, less it's going to cut. Mm. Obviously, mm. don't turn it, turn it so that the top edge goes in. But... Yeah. 
also twist more one one side or the other if you need to adjust that, as well as using your outside, your right hand to turn it and to lever it around. Side there is still a bit more, a bit smoother. Exactly matches. Sorry? Yeah, 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 that's what I'm trying to do. That's yeah. right. Then. <laughs> yeah, when, when when the curve of your bowl exactly matches your uh, yeah, that's a bad curve, you, you're getting a large area which yeah. is um, just caught, and, and then it's <laughs>
So did you grind the scraper? That special grind, isn't it, on the scraper? No. No, it's not going. Sorry. Just a... Yeah. Whatever it happens to come off the um, <laughs> the grinder at that particular moment. Yeah. <laughs> should all the curve should always be smaller than the curve of the bowl. Oh yeah. 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 And that's that as well is probably. Um, It's probably not worth spending too much more time of an actual demo yeah. on this. Thank you. 
digs all way to Saturday before the yeah. 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 So what's going on there, Yeah, we haven't been here, have we? Yeah. And then we haven't been here, have we? Yeah. I've not heard anything, I don't know. I've not heard anything, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, it's a meeting. Yeah. Sometimes they cancel yeah. the meeting. I've not heard yeah. anything. Just before the, um, the meeting. Yeah. 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 No, they used to, so Shannon's not for the following week. Yeah. Not this, not the next week, you know. Yeah. 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 Oh, is it? Yeah. That's really good, Fantastic. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> How good is that? Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. Nice job. 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 Nice